Hello lovelies, thank you so much for joining me for today's video. Recently I joined an online D&D campaign that a friend invited me to. This was my first game that I'd played in since 2016, so I was super excited and kind of nervous. At the time of this recording, I have only played in two of the games, and my third one is tomorrow. But I gotta tell you guys, that second game got... really intense. So I just had to tell you guys about it. Welcome to my new series, Tales from the Table. Episode 1. The game where everything goes wrong. A little information before we get to the story. I am playing a fire genasi druid who is going through her angsty teen phase as she wanders the world. That is how she comes to meet the rest of the party. She runs into them when they are getting attacked in a cave full of goblins. Aside from myself, the party includes a half-elven ranger, a tiefling paladin, a dwarf cleric, and a human fighter. We are currently at level two. This is where our story begins. After we had gotten everything at the goblin cave tied up for the most part, we were trying to decide what to do next. The party had heard much about a mercenary group called the Red Brands that had been terrorizing the town, specifically the shop owners. Most of the party was interested in finding out more about these Red Brands and finding a way to stop them, but since we are so low of a level, the ranger and I considered that maybe we should take on another task that would result in us getting three healing potions. We thought this would be wise because the cleric and I, who are the main healers, are still so low of levels that we only have a few healing spells to our names every single day, and quite a few of us had already gone unconscious during the fight at the Goblin Cave. So the party split up to investigate these two different tasks. I went with the ranger to learn more about the healing potion quest, while the three other members of the party went to the town leader to find out more about the Red Brands. When we reconvened in the town square, the ranger and I had discovered that it would take at least six days to complete the healing potion task because of travel. Meanwhile, the other members of the party had come to find out that the town leader was a little bit of a chicken shit and was not willing to go up against the Red Brands. However, we had also discovered that there was a tavern that the Red Brands tend to frequent, so we thought we could find out more about them there. The party was too impatient to go on the healing potion quest, so we immediately went to the tavern where the Red Brands were supposed to hang out. We were greeted at the tavern by four Red Brand mercenaries and immediately got into a fight. We had managed to kill all of the Red Brand mercenaries there, however, I had gone unconscious during the fight and forced the cleric to use one of his healing spells. I also had to use one of my features called Balm of the Summer Court to heal the ranger who had become heavily wounded during the fight. I only have two of these feature uses every day, keep in mind. Once we had buried the Red Brand mercenary members that we had killed, the party recruited the help of a boy that they had met before I had joined them. This boy somehow knew of a cave entrance to the Red Brand hideout. He took us there, and we walked in, telling him to go back home so that he could be safe once we had seen the cave. The ranger led the way into the tunnel, which led to a huge cave that had a 20-foot deep crevasse, which was spanned by two bridges. With some not-so-good stealth checks, we had been noticed by a Nothic that the Red Brands had hired as a form of security. However, he did not attack us. I have to think that this is because I took one of the Red Brand cloaks from the dead bodies, but I can't be sure. Instead of attacking us, he made a deal with us. If we brought him food, he would let us go. Of course, as a Nothic, he eats flesh, so we had to find someone in the hideout, kill them, and bring him the body to feast on. Of course, most of us still didn't trust him. We walked away from the cave with the crevice and went down a flight of stairs with the ranger in the lead. 
The ranger ultimately opened a door that led to a barrack, which held at least three to four bugbears, as well as a goblin that they were torturing. The goblin fainted at the sight of us, but the bugbears immediately jumped to attack us. Only one of our party managed to roll a higher initiative than the bugbears, and as he was towards the back of the group, they basically got the first attack. Because my character is a fire genasi who likes setting things on fire, as is part of her backstory, I of course wanted to light the place up. I had been gifted a keg of pure alcohol by the tavern owner that we had helped with the red brands, and I intended on using it. I started pouring the alcohol out on the first bugbear to leave the barrack, and I spread the rest of it around the corridor as much as I could. However, I did not want to send the alcohol on fire until our ranger got out of the corridor. I didn't want to hurt her. The problem was, she was the main target of the bugbears because she was at the front of the group, and ultimately, she went unconscious. I made a choice to let the alcohol-covered bugbear get away and hide in the barracks so that I could go to the ranger and use my last Balm of the Summer Court feature to heal her. This ultimately gave the paladin the opportunity to stand in the doorway of the barrack and attack. I had no more healing spells after this. I did my best to move to the back of the group, which was at the top of the stairs, because my hit points were getting very low and I had already gone unconscious in the previous fight. Eventually, both the paladin and the ranger were attacked into unconsciousness, and only one of the bugbears was heavily hurt. It happened to be the one that I covered in alcohol. I had to bite the bullet and start setting things on fire. Fortunately, I don't think I hurt any of my party members. As far as I know. Of course, that could have also been because the cleric had used a few of his spells to spare the dying. To be honest with you, the fire spells and the alcohol were doing me little to no good. I was primarily using the Create Bonfire cantrip during the fight because it would do the most damage. However, the deck save DC was only 12, which was easy for the bugbears to overcome. Somehow, someway, we had managed to kill all the bugbears except for one. He was still making all of the dexterity saving throws that he had to, even though he was starting and ending his turn in my bonfire so he was taking no damage. Our fighter managed to shoot him in the foot, which halved his speed and put his dexterity at a disadvantage. This started to sway things somewhat in our favor. I started doing a little bit more damage, especially after I started using the Produce Flame cantrip. However, he did still continue to roll very well on his saves and attacks, and ultimately both the fighter and the cleric were made unconscious as well. I was the last party member standing. I knew I only had two hit points left, but I also knew that if I let him leave the area of the bonfire, he wouldn't have to keep making saves and he wouldn't take any more damage. I had to keep him in that area so that he could at least take damage twice around. So instead of moving back, I moved forward and trapped him in the spot. By sheer dumb luck, the bugbear's attacks missed me, and our cleric rolled a natural 20 on his death save and popped back up to one hit point. We proceeded to whittle away at the bugbear's health, and at this point Produce Flame was doing me far more good than the Create Bonfire cantrip. But with one good hit, the cleric was down again. This also gave the bugbear the opportunity to leave the space of the bonfire. He no longer had to make dexterity saving throws at disadvantage, and he wouldn't take any more damage until I had cast Create Bonfire again and he had failed the dexterity saving throw. I put some distance between us, which was easy because his speed was half from that crossbow bolt, and I tried to call to our Nothic friend, but he never came to help us. So I tried the bonfire again because of the damage it could do. And again, the bugbear saved from the bonfire. I tried to put even more space between us, so I ran across one of the bridges that spanned the crevasse. Unfortunately, that happened to be the bridge that could only hold up to 50 pounds of weight. It broke beneath me, and I fell 20 feet into the crevasse, taking 2d6 of damage. Obviously, since I had only 2 hit points, this meant that I was also unconscious. Before we ended the session that night, the DM asked those of us who had not been spared from dying to continue rolling our death saves. By sheer dumb luck yet again, the cleric rolled another natural 20 and popped back up again to 1 hit point. He cast Sacred Flame on the bugbear and killed it. Finally. Come to find out, the bugbear only had one hit point left 
when I went unconscious. The cleric noticed that I was missing and that the bridge had been broken. He went over to look into the crevasse and found me lying there with black mist starting to surround me. So next session, we're going to be starting with the cleric, who has a single hit point, trying to get me out of the crevasse before the black mist can get to me, and then he has to try to find a way to save four unconscious people in enemy territory with no spells left. For those of you who are wondering, yes, I've already started thinking of a backup character. And that brings us to the end of this episode of Tales from the Table. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.